All right, uh, we're going to start the first afternoon session, and I'm introducing my very good friend, Dr. Ian Humphreys, who's uh, Chief of Rhinology Division at University of Washington, and he's going to walk us through uh, sphenopalatine artery ligation. Dr. Humphreys, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you, uh, everybody, and it's really a, a pleasure and an honor to be here at this course and uh, see old friends, and uh, hopefully I can walk us through an SPA ligation um, here in just a few moments. So uh, principles of SPA ligation, uh, this side, we'll use this side to just kind of, uh, I think, demonstrate the relevant anatomy that we're interested in, and then we can come to the opposite side and do the dissection. So really the area of interest for us in the SPA ligation is gonna be where the sphenopalatine artery comes out from the lateral nasal wall posteriorly to the maxillary sinus. So in this side where a medial maxillectomy has already been done, we can leverage this space right here just to kind of get a sense of, of understanding kind of the anatomic relationships in the area that we want to be. And really the first bone that comes into mind when we think about this is the vertical process of the palatine bone, which will take us to the crista ethmoidalis into this area that you'll start to see right through here that represents where the SPA is gonna come into the posterolateral nasal cavity. Now often we don't have this approach, so we don't have necessarily this relationship immediately available to us, but it kind of, uh, this just leveraging this uh, opportunity to demonstrate you know, where we are and where we wanna be for the SPA ligation. So let's go to the opposite side where the, the tissues are not as dissected out as much. All right, so here on the right side, um, what I'm seeing is a middle turbinate, uh, unsinate, looks like it's here partially, almost like a lateralized middle turbinate. Uh, we have not done a maxillary introstomy on this side. There is an opening here into the poster aspect of the maxillary sinus itself. When you do an SPA ligation, you have the option of either doing an upfront maxillary introstomy or not doing a maxillary introstomy. So you have to come to the conclusion of which uh, style or technique you prefer to do when you're doing a SPA ligation. For um, purposes of demonstration, I'll show it without the maxillary introstomy. I think it's a little bit easier with the maxillary introstomy. But without a maxillary introstomy, the area that we're interested in is we're looking again for this posterior lateral nasal wall attachment of the middle turbinate onto the lateral nasal wall. You can see here we have the superior surface of the inferior turbinate, the posterior lateral wall, insertion of the middle turbinate uh, into the lateral nasal wall. Here's portions of the uncinate. It's, it's been fractured, so it's mobilized. Uh, typically, this wouldn't be as mobile as we're seeing it here in this particular specimen. But really, if we're going to do it without doing the maxillary introstomy technique, so bulla, uncinate, hiatus semilunaris, you would make a vertical incision just anterior to this insertion site of the, max or the middle turbinate to the lateral nasal wall. So if we make a vertical-based incision in this area through here, what I'm looking for, again, is that posterior lateral nasal wall, the vertical process of the palatine bone. Do we have a caudal? This one, there's like a little spatula to this. Do we have a sharper one? Thank you. Uh, you can use a caudal, you could use a sickle knife, uh, you can use a 15 blade, whatever sharp instrument you feel confident with. You know if you're in this plane here, anterior to the middle turbinate, the attachment that you are not going to be on the artery itself. And the artery is going to be a little deeper and we're looking for that crista ethmoidalis. So just trying to get into that proper plane. The section is a little bit more difficult in this model for this cadaver right now, just because the tissues have been fractured superiorly, but there's the bony plane that we're trying to get into. Here we go, almost there. Okay, great. All right, so that's the plane that we wanna be into. So the vertical-based incision, uh, extending from about the mid aspect of that insertion site down towards the inferior turbinate. This inferior turbinate is diminutive, particularly here posteriorly. So normally we'd have some bulk or the tail of the inferior turbinate here as we look towards the eustachian tube. I'm just gonna further develop this incision superiorly. Dissect it off the posterior lateral nasal wall. I'm gonna follow this incision up. And so, again, I'm looking for that prominence for the crista ethmoidalis. 
The crystalloid ethmoidalis is going to look uh, like a perpendicular and triangular shaped piece of bone. In this case, um, it, the area of our SPA, you can see this recess right through here. The crystal ethmoidalis uh, has been previously fractured, so it's not as prominent as we typically see. But now you're getting a really good look here at the SPA. And you can see how it has this kind of foraminal appearance to it. There's a variety of structures that traverse through it. The SPA artery itself, there's nerves that trust or travel across and with the artery in this area, and you may see some pterygopalantine fossa fat. So this on this side is the posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. You can, if you wanted to elevate this mucosa back, you can even remove portions of this uh, wall, posterior wall of the maxillary sinus that takes you towards a, a PPF dissection, which is not necessarily necessary for an SPA ligation, but you have that available to you. I'm gonna extend a little higher. Now you're seeing more of what's a typical appearance of what the crystath modalis would look like. This again, this little prominent shaped bone here, kind of a up kerosene. Yep, kerosene is a really safe, effective tool for this portion of the procedure because you can use the distal tine to uh, displace your uh, contents that you care about away from you and then take the up kerosene to make that proximal cut to further expose the SPA. Remember, the SPA can have multiple branches or ramifications that come out of this area. So it's important to inspect and observe for that uh, as part of your dissection. I'll go back to the caudal. We'll need a ball tip probe in a moment as well. Yep. And there, can, there is variability, so you, you really want to make sure that you get beyond the sphenopalatine foramen. So we're beyond the sphenopalatine foramen. And then once you're beyond the sphenopalatine foramen, make sure that you're dissecting above the foramen itself. And you can see the, the vascular pedicle here. And then getting around the pedicle, 360 degrees. Further just exposing have a ball tip probe. For me, I, prefer, I find the ball tip probe is really helpful for this step. Just dissecting in and around bluntly to isolate the artery itself. And it's really starting to show itself. And if you follow this more laterally, this will take you into the pterygopalatine fossa and eventually the internal maxillary artery. And then now we can see that we're all the way around it. See the end of the ball tip probe on the other side of the artery itself. And then choosing from whatever uh, method you prefer to ligate the artery. Uh, initially, I, I started uh, first with clipping the artery and using small endovascular clips around the artery in this area. But I found over time that uh, even just a bipolar across this right through here and redraping it down at the conclusion, I uh, was sufficient to meet the needs uh, for the indications of the procedure of this, namely recurrent epistaxis would be one of the primary indications or a posterior epistaxis uh, would be an indication for this as well too. We do often use this for certain tumors. Uh, JNA is another tumor where this can be an effective strategy for devascularization of your tumor. You can see some of the fat coming out of the pterygopalantine fossa in this area. So whatever method you use or choose to ligate across the artery is uh, your next step in the operation here. So in this case, uh, we'll just assume that we you know, had an endovascular clip. So pretend this is our endovascular clip. You really want to make sure you seat around it in its entirety. So see that distal tine of the, the, the instrument, and, and in this case, an endovascular clip. Apply your clip, and then lastly would be to redrape the tissue. So at the end, redrape the tissue over the area. I don't necessarily place anything else over the area. Some people uh, find, you know, um, gelatin-based uh, chemostatic material over it if they'd like, or some gelatin-based uh, absorbable dressing, whatever you prefer. But I think most often you really don't need to do much if you adhere to these principles. If you're doing a maxillary introstomy, it's a similar technique. Um, the maxillary introstomy just gives you this incision up front. So that's the advantage of doing an upfront maxillary introstomy is it really declares and defines this edge really well. So the, the initial um, incision line is more defined and apparent. Um, but this non-maxillary introstomy approach will also show you the same target. Yeah. 